what's going on guys in this video we are going to talk about vinyl bootlegs so this is a subject that is becoming more and more in the mainstream vernacular and the mainstream consciousness uh, as the vinyl hobby continues to grow exponentially I've talked about bootlegs on this channel before. I have videos talking about my favorite hip hop bootlegs and things of that nature. But I wanna talk about the bootleg scene as a whole and kind of my thoughts on some things that are happening that are good and bad. If you haven't already, it'd be awesome if you'd like this video, hit the red subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on so you don't miss out on any weekly videos I put out. Make sure you leave a comment on this video with your thoughts on the bootleg culture, especially modern day. So bootleg recordings, just to kind of jump back as far as we can, is taking a recording and it's an unauthorized, unlicensed recording and putting it out there, whether it's digitally or on a physical format like a tape, CD, or record. This has been happening for a very long time. Probably is since physical media existed, but it was prevalent in the 60s, 70s, with a lot of artists like Pink Floyd, Bruce Springsteen, Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, people that were known for their amazing and iconic live performances, people were taking these recordings and putting them onto records. And the records were of varying quality, of course. Sometimes they were taken with a private recorder from the audience. Sometimes they were from a soundboard, but ultimately they just gave fans the experience of hearing someone's music from a different perspective than the label was putting out. Oftentimes they came in these kind of white, tan, or cream sleeves that had a colored stamp uh, with the artist name and the venue name and the date of when the concert was. That seemed to be a kind of very commonly replicated visual format for bootlegs back in the day. Let's cut to maybe five or six years ago. When I first started getting into vinyl in 2013, what I noticed was that a lot of my favorite hip hop records were not getting official vinyl presses. Nowadays, almost everything gets a vinyl press, which is great, but back then it was really kind of pick and choose and it wasn't really with rhyme or reason. It was just kind of, this one got one, this one did not. For example, Kanye's Graduation, an amazing record, never had a vinyl release. 808's The Follow Up did, but what bootleggers did, I think over in Germany, was they would actually press it on colored vinyl, sometimes to match the cover. So Graduation had a cool purple marble version, also a ton of other random colors. The trend of hip hop bootlegs was that usually there was like a clear or a colored version that matched the art, and then a whole smattering of random colors. It's mostly just to kind of get the most bang for your buck when you're pressing a record. They really went with, I guess, recycled or whatever the plant had type materials. So it wasn't dedicated variants as much as it was trying to get something out as quickly as possible. And in that mindset of getting something out as quickly as possible, the quality did occasionally suffer. Bootlegs don't sound amazing from that era. They'll sound mostly like CDs. Sometimes you get a little surface noise. Sometimes you even get ones that skip. The quality control was virtually non-existent. And if you wanted it, it was mostly just to add to your collection and complete an artist's discography because it doesn't sound better or different than listening to a CD or on Spotify or something of that nature. I bought a bunch of them because I'm a collector and I wanted to have Drake's Nothing Was The Same. I wanted to have Kanye's Yeezus, things that never got official vinyl presses that I loved. I wanted to just spit it on the turntable because if it was no different in sound, the ritual of vinyl still remained even if you're listening to a bootleg. And nowadays, the bootleg scene has kind of exploded. If something's never had a vinyl issue or has been long out of print, it's almost guaranteed to get a bootleg at this point. Before Tom Petty announced his Wildflowers recently, it had a bootleg. Red Hot Chili Peppers Live in Hyde Park, bootleg. Slipknot's Iowa, very famously, has a bootleg. All of these records, do they sound better than their multi-hundred dollar counterparts? I'm gonna guess no, but does it sound good enough to say I'll spend 40 bucks on this versus $500 on this? Probably for most people's setup, yeah. There is a small inlet of the bootleg scene that I want to kind of draw attention to without actually exposing anything in it because I really like what the people are doing in this scene, but it is very secretive because I guess what they're doing is technically illegal, even though I think that it is mostly passion projects. The way I view it, it's nothing different than burning yourself a CD and making a fancy insert for yourself. These are not for-profit projects. These are projects that raise money by selling them to pay for the cost of making them. It really is gigantic labors of love and the video game bootleg scene is out of control because these records look and sound better than most records I own. The care and the love from the people that make these is just unbelievable and I, you know, am able to have a bunch of my favorite video game soundtracks like Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, Final Fantasy 9, and even obscure stuff like Ragnarok Online. There are things that these little groups of bootleggers are making as love letters to video game music. And I think it's a huge misstep for all of these studios to not be putting more of an emphasis on 
vinyl. I remember famously I Am 8-Bit made a comment online saying they don't mind the bootlegs because it just brings more love and attention to video game vinyl in general, which overall boosts their sales. It's kind of like a rising tide lifts all ships mentality in a way. And if the people that are in charge of that music, they aren't doing anything with it, that's on them. They gotta kind of get their stuff together. There was such a huge missed opportunity to not press these game soundtracks from major studios on vinyl. They could do it so creatively the way these bootleggers do and they just don't. Let me show you really quickly my favorite bootleg in my collection. This is one of my favorite games and soundtracks of all time, gotta be top five. Um, and I am just so impressed with the quality of this as an unofficial release. Again, this is unofficial. This was not made by any of the companies involved. This is uh, Chrono Trigger. It's a box set. There's gold foil literally all over it on the spine, on the back. It's machine numbered on the back. I think there's only 250 copies. First of all, it comes with these two custom slip mats, which is really cool. A nice thin uh, rice papery insert on the front that goes over this amazing booklet that's better than any booklet that's ever come with a record I've ever purchased. It is just such a nice uh, love letter to the game, like I mentioned. There's so many different uh, track lists and scenes from the game. Um, beautiful, beautiful full color booklet showcasing the story of the game and all the music that is played throughout it. Um, really heavy duty and, and nice. And I can't believe how nice the jackets are. I mean, these are all soft touch jackets. Each one has a different character from the game. Just such beautiful, beautiful art. And I'm telling you, these jackets feel so nice. Again, there's gold foil on them. The discs themselves come in polyline sleeves and they're on clear vinyl. The amount of work put into something like that is astronomical and the result absolutely shows. The music was specifically mastered for vinyl and it sounds unbelievably good. This is exactly what this soundtrack deserves. And I feel like if the company actually made it, it would have been a real big cash grab. It would have been probably maybe a gatefold, two discs with a bunch of stuff cut from the soundtrack. This is the definitive edition and a fan just made it. My personal thoughts on bootlegs is that if they're a labor of love and it's not for profit, I'm all for it. I think it's a really cool creative art project that you can share with other people. If there is an official release of anything that I have a bootleg of, I will buy it hands down because I do think supporting the label when they give you the opportunity to is always worth it. The last thing I want to kind of address in this video though is a trend that I'm noticing that's a little dangerous and I'm a little disturbed by as someone who buys records and kind of has my eye on a lot of different stores and storefronts and online stores and whatnot. So there's an online store called Roland Rex. They put out a ton of bootlegs. They don't press them themselves, but they source them from whatever the sources are that are pressing all of these records. And they have a great storefront, good prices, and a really interesting array of different albums, ranging from Frank Ocean's Blonde to live Black Sabbath records. They are awesome. But what I am noticing is other stores and sellers taking note of this, buying them, and then reselling them at a higher price point. Rolling Rex does a pretty good job of keeping everything in print, so a lot of bootlegs, not all of them, but a lot of them do stay in print over time. If you wait, they'll press more. When another seller or store takes that record and puts it as a rare release and puts it on their rare wall or charges a triple premium or double premium based on what the MSRP is from Rolling Rex, that rubs me the wrong way. First of all, there's a way to get them accessibly, so you're just putting out an overpriced version of something that exists and is able to be purchased by anyone. And second of all, the bigger issue for me is that they're not labeling them all the time as bootlegs. A lot of the time, bootlegs have amassed this uh, moniker called imports. And yes, that is true. They are imported from overseas if you're in the US. But import does not mean legitimate. Import in this case means it is a bootleg sourced from questionable sources that is not an official release. When I see stores putting up these bootlegs on their rare record wall or selling them on their online store and not calling out that they're unofficial or a bootleg, that rubs me the wrong way because people like me who are really hooked in, we know it's a bootleg. But people like random person shopping in their store may pull out a record and be like, oh my God, Frank Ocean's Blonde for $40? This is the steal of a lifetime. And they'll buy it and bring it home and not realize until it's too late that they bought a fake copy. That's unethical to me, and I feel like I'm seeing this happen more and more over the past couple of years. Stores are putting in the bins with everything else. You're sifting through Kendrick Lamar, you see Damn, you see Good Kid Mad City, you see Japan Butterfly, you see Untitled Unmastered, and then you see Section 80. And Section 80 is not officially pressed. That is 100% a bootleg, but it's not called out. It's the same price as everything else, maybe even more expensive, and people are just going to buy it, assuming it's legitimate, assuming this is a Kendrick release. And it is not. It is unofficial. And while I have a copy and it sounds pretty good, 
I would like to know that it's not real if I didn't know that ahead of time. So that is something I hope that if you're a store owner and you're watching this, you maybe take into consideration moving forward, being transparent with that information, because I do think it's a little predatory to not upfront share that information with your buyers. So that is my thoughts on the vinyl bootleg scene right now. Some pros, some cons. Let's talk about it in the comments. Leave one below with your thoughts on this scene. Maybe some of your favorite bootlegs that you've purchased. Let's chat. I look forward to talking to you guys down there. Thank you so much for watching. More videos coming soon. Take it easy.